Um, and this one person at, said, another client of mine has started calling me really late. They recently called me after 10 p.m. How do I have a conversation with them to tell them that this isn't okay? I hate conflict and I definitely can't afford to lose the client. Well, I've been in that position. <laughs> oh my God, but like zero boundaries with clients. Clients thinking because you work for them that your time is theirs and they own that relationship, they own your time. Uh, to be honest, what I used to do was I eventually just stopped picking up the phone. It was as simple as that. And they learn pretty quick that like, that's not an acceptable time to call or be WhatsApping in the middle of the night and all sorts of different things. I think it's about, I, I would say this comes from as a business owner, I totally get it because every client is important. And the behavior of dropping your boundaries comes from a place of fear because you're scared you're going to lose the client, you're scared X, Y, and Z. But actually, I think if you take ownership of that situation, you know, set the boundaries, have the conversation, you know, I'm, I won't be available after this particular time, um, unless it's, you know, obviously an absolute emergency and you're on a deadline or something's happened, totally understand. But other than that, um, I think it's just about making it very clear that you work till this time and then you're not available. I ended up just getting two phones. So now I have a work phone and a home phone. Work phone at the end of the day gets left on my desk and I pick it up the next day. Um, if someone has an emergency, you know, I'll, I'll probably read my emails or something secretly. I know I shouldn't, but I would. So I would see if something was going on. But I really think it's just about reducing your accessibility. Um, probably having a conversation about it as well. I know it's uncomfortable, but most people are rational and good. Um, so I think that just by opening up, having a conversation and not answering the phone anymore is a very clear way of stopping that moving forward. I always use, sorry to uh, go on, but there's a really useful anecdote that I use around this, which is, do you remember the last time you went to a shop and it was closed? what would you do? Do you break in and go and get what you want? Or do you say, oh, it's closed, I'll come back when it's open? It's a perfect manifestation of boundaries. It's there, it's visible. But because we're so used to shopping online 24 hours, doing this 24 hours, we think everyone is available 24 hours. So you just have to put your shop front up. We're closed. And people respect that and they learn how to treat you moving forward because of it. So even though it's difficult, a little bit of a conversation, maybe a bit of a joke about it, you know, and it's important. You need your recovery time. You can't be your best if you don't ever rest. Oh, that should be a... Uh, <laughs> I didn't Write that down that. quick. <laughs> yeah. I think there's, that, uh, you need to rest. And you I think there's ways that you can present that in a, in a professional way as well. Like you can treat yourself like a business and present yourself as a well you are a business but yeah. treat yourself as an agency would like you wouldn't phone an agency at 8 p.m and expect them to pick up exactly and so i think putting notes in every visible place that could possibly allude to your working hours is a yep. sensible thing to do if you put it on the website my working hours are this if you put it in your email yep. signature my working hours are this if you yep. can also automate your out of office so that if somebody emails you at 8 p.m they get a response saying I'll yep. respond in the morning. My working hours are this. Um, and it's all we'll very quickly. <laughs> it's all, yeah, there's all ways to enforce that sort of ahead of time. And then even the clients that you're already with, as soon as they get an out and out of office saying that, it's, you've not had that conversation with them. So it's not like a direct confrontation, but they are getting that message indirectly from you saying it. Um, I also love that, um, I can't remember, one of, one of our um, BDF friends said that they used to make up people that were part of their company. Yeah. And they used to respond. They had an email address for them. So it was like Shirley at BirminghamDesign.co.uk. And she'd respond and say, um, uh, some, you know, Dan is out of the office. He'll get back to you tomorrow. Or you have not paid us for two months. <laughs> yeah, Brenda and accounts. I'm going to set Brenda yeah. and accounts on you. They don't exist. Yeah. It's, it's a fiction of a... <laughs> I like there's, that idea. there's ways of managing urgent messages as well. So like, I think in, in our industry, we're sort of a little bit uh, where we're working with websites and people selling tickets 24 seven, we're a little bit more likely to have things that are, you know, transactional, that are big money go wrong, especially working with clients overseas and things like that. So setting up that process of what actually does happen if something is actually urgent and your website's down or whatever it might be. 
and having that in place so that when you do get a message it is hopefully definitely urgent now we still get messages that are definitely not urgent that are <laughs> labeled as urgent but it should at least filter out some that are things like can we make the logo red today yeah i've got one um, one thing to add to that can be just which is and I, I can't remember where I saw this, but I love this advice. And I, I took a screenshot of it and it pops up on my desktop background to remind me of this every so often. Um, well, two things, actually. One is that um, if you say to clients, especially at the outset, but you can say this at any point to them, that you have a rule. So you say, I, I've got a rule. I don't do any emails after such and such. It stops it being a personal attack on them. Psychologically, I think it helps them understand, oh, OK, this, I don't want to make you break your rules that you've set. This is a personal boundary that you have rather than just saying, I don't want to email you back or I don't want to pick up the phone at, at nine o'clock. If you say to someone, I've got a rule, I never work for free or I've got a rule, I never, you know, I don't take calls after 7 p.m. or whatever. I think that psychologically helps them understand, okay, that's the boundary which I'm not going to make you break that rule. And it's only, a, you know, it's a simple trick of language, I guess, because maybe it's a rule you've just invented, but I think it it does help put a little bit of protection in so it doesn't seem like such a personal rejection for them. Yeah, um, and it's yeah. something you do with everyone. Yeah, yeah. 